This week's message, given by Pastor Stephen Yoon at the Sakasana United Methodist Church, December 20th, 2020. The message is Incarnation, the Light of the World, based on Genesis 1, 1 1-5 and Matthew 5, 14-16. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1-5. through In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering above the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. A reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its own stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's good to be with you this morning. Would you join me as I pray? Oh God, we thank you for the light that has come to overcome our darkness. Teach us to be the light of the world as our Lord Jesus teaches us, so that others may be brought into the light, into the relationship with you. Amen. Well, if your eyes were open as I was praying, you must have thought that something went wrong with this worship video. You were seeing dark screen. Even as I'm speaking now, it is still dark. But don't worry, there's no problem with this video or your TV, how old it is. The reason why it's dark is just because I'm preaching in the dark. We're doing an exercise here. Well, actually, it's just me because you're still watching this under morning sunlight coming through your windows. But as you see me preaching in darkness, I invite you to think of the moment when you were in complete darkness. Maybe after a power outage or the time when you got lost in the dark in a place you've never been before. What was it like being in darkness? How are you feeling? What were you trying to do? I'm sure you have survived many power outages before, so you know what to expect. But imagine you got lost in a rural area in Midwest. It's cloudy night. So you cannot even see the moon in the sky. The only light you see is the light from your car. And the world is complete darkness. As you drive the road carefully, you are tempted to turn on the high beam. But in a foggy, snowy, dark road, the stronger the light, the worse the visibility. You want to stop and find a gas station or hotel, but there's nothing out there because you're passing by a huge cornfield that continues miles after miles. You never know when snow will stop. You gotta keep going, that's the only only option you have. And this is actually what happened to me back in 2013 when I was living in the South. My family and I were traveling to Chicago for a conference, and on our way back home, we were invited to visit a friend of mine who were pastoring in a rural area of southern Illinois. I came to know later that it was blizzard that we went through out of ignorance. At one point there was a car slowly following behind us and I know it's kind of sounds strange but it was comforting to know that someone, somebody was behind us. So there was a light behind us And suddenly there was another car driving slowly ahead of us, so we were able to follow its light. So there was another light ahead of us. We had traveled together many miles until we found the big lights, big lights with a big smile. And many of you know what that was because I shared this story before. It was McDonald's. I've never been happier to see McDonald's in my life. 
We're so excited to find the lights of far, the bright golden arches. We felt like God smiling at us and saying, See, I'm guiding you guys through darkness. I am the light onto your path. It was one of those moments when I realized what it means for God to be the light onto my path, no matter how dark it is. Sometimes our life journey is like a terrible driving experience, isn't it? You may feel like you're driving in darkness, not being sure of whether you're going in the right direction and how you can make it through darkness. But just like the car ahead of me, the car following behind me, the light of Jesus guides us and enlightens our lives so that we could take the courage the journey through darkness. God is not only present with us, but also becomes the light onto our path. And I believe this is exactly the message we discover from the fourth title for Jesus that we are going to talk about today. That is, the light of the world. Remember on first Sunday we talked about King the Messiah. The second Sunday it was Savior. And third Sunday, which was last Sunday, we talked about Emmanuel, God with us, and learned how the theme of Emmanuel is permeated through the entire Gospel of Matthew as its foundational theme and motif. As we conclude this Advent Sermon series entitled Incarnation, our focus this morning is what it means to call Jesus the light of the world and what the coming of the light would mean to us and to our world today in the context of in the context of such understanding as many would, many of you would remember there are two scripture passages that we read on christmas eve prior to lighting candles and singing silent night together we do it every year and we'll do it next week on christmas eve as we celebrate the birth of jesus christ first reading is genesis 1 the second is John first, the Gospel of John chapter, chapter 1, where Jesus is described as the light of the world. Unlike other Gospel writers, John begins his story uh, not with the birth of Jesus, but with the uh, theological account of the light and the word. This opening reminds us of the beginning of the world described in the creation narrative in Genesis 1, which Mike read for us this morning. Genesis 1 portrays God as the source of all light. When it was dark, things were without shape and form. God said, let there be light. God creates light in the midst of darkness, and the acts of God's creation continues in the book of Genesis. What John wants to testify through his gospel is the message that incarnation, the birth of the Son of God means that God who became flesh is the incarnated Word and light. Interestingly, the image of light is permeated to the Gospel of John. John witnesses to how Jesus, the incarnated light, served as the light of the world through his presence and impact in the world. In this conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus describes those who come and live in truth as one who come to the light. One day Jesus raises his friend Lazarus from death in the darkness of tomb. And then Jesus calls his disciples to walk in the light of the day, not to not stumble in the night. Prior to healing a blind man opening his eyes to the light, Jesus teaches in the temple and he calls himself the light of the world. In the final week of his life, he invites his followers to believe in the light so that their lives might be determined by the light. So throughout this story, John reveals the truth that Jesus has come as the light of the world. That's his foundational motif and theme. And this is good news for people who are living in darkness, 
and all of us who are seeking to leave this season of Advent faithfully. Interestingly for us who live in the Northern Hemisphere, Advent Christmas season come in the season of snow and cold and darkness. As we know, the day of calendar year with the fewest hours of sunlight usually fall on a few days before Christmas. Ironically, this season is also the time when a lot of people experience the weight of losses, grief, fears, pressures, and shatters hopes. Now, with all that is going on in our world, many of us may feel even colder and darker, more lonely, more lost, more afraid during this season. However, the very nature of this season reminds us of what it means to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. This is the coldest and darkest of seasons and reminds us of what it means to welcome the light of the world into our lives. We're celebrating Jesus who still is the light in the midst of a dark world, a light so bright that darkness can overcome it, a light that is so warm that coldness cannot overcome it. In his book, Adam Hamilton explains about two broad categories of existential darkness mentioned in Scripture. The first is the moral darkness, which we still see in our world, and events like terrorism, mass shooting, and genocide, racial violence, they're all examples of moral darkness caused by sinful, harmful, selfish acts of humanity. Another category of darkness we experience is what is called emotional, relational darkness. The darkness we encounter in circumstances that leave us hopeless. For instance, darkness we experience in times of grief, despair, sadness. But whether it's a moral or relational, emotional darkness, they have significant impact on our mind and body and soul. In the midst of profound darkness we are experiencing currently, some of us might be in a situation where God's light seems to be delayed, somehow delayed, or, or even obstructed. I know a lot of us are trying to make the spiritual sense of all the things that right now. We're in the midst of such a dark time, a time when uncertainty must be accepted. A time when our grieving or mourning is our everyday discipline. A time when our loneliness, anxiety, isolation, despair keep growing and growing. Sometimes our heart is overshadowed with darkness and sight. And our soul is looking hard to spot the tiny little light. But in the midst of darkness, God sends us the light that enlighten our hearts and our lives. As Adam Hamilton wrote in his book, Christmas, the incarnation of God, is God's response to all, all forms of darkness. Jesus, the incarnated light, came to reflect God's light to us in a way that we could receive it. He shines His light of love within us and walk us through darkness. That's what Jesus does. And this light is the light of God who so loved the world and incarnated His love among us. This light is the light of God who fills us with a living hope. And this light is the light of God who fills our heart with peace, saying, Be still, I am your God. This light is the light of God who assures us, saying, I am the lamp unto your feet. I am guiding you even through the darkness. So trust me as you put your step forward. A week ago I saw a video on an artist. The canvas with this artist, interestingly, is the field covered with snow. It draws beautifully um, you know, shapes and the different patterns on the snow. What he does is simply to walk on the snow. If someone sees him, he's just a guy who's walking uh, on the snow for nothing. But when, he, when his walk is finished and is seen from above, it's such a beautiful, fascinating artwork beyond description. In the same way, when we walk with Jesus, the light of the world, 
He enlightens our heart to see that our lives are part of a bigger picture that begins and ends with God. Because God cared enough to want to save us through His Son, Jesus, we could trust the same God who will guide us through the darkness we face in our journey. Because of this faith in God, we could feel loved, find peace and hope, even in circumstances where it it's, it's, uh, seems unlikely. Of course, it's not that the birth of Christ fixed all the problems in our world. We know people still have struggles with their lives, their health, their relationship, with their jobs, their families. The purpose of Jesus' coming wasn't simply to turn our dark night into a bright day, but to show us what it means to faithfully walk even when things are dark, and what it means to shine through in the midst of darkness. In Christ we see the incarnated light constantly piercing darkness in our world. We see God's light coming to us over and over to, to enlighten our hearts and lives, to give us vision for who we are and what we are called to be. In the Gospel story we read this morning, Jesus reminds His disciples of their identity, saying, You are the light of the world. Jesus teaches that if Jesus is the light of the world, then His followers must be the one, like a lamp on a stand, like these candles. A lamp should be placed on a stand in order to give light to those in the room. Perhaps Jesus knew this would not always be the case in the lives of His followers. We do things like a, placing a lamp under a basket, or even blow out the light. Here's a story. At church, little Jane had listened to a sermon, Let Your Light Shine. The only part she remembered was the text, but she didn't understand what that means. And her mom explained, it means living with good deeds, good behaviors, good attitudes, and good words. In the afternoon, there was a trouble in the nursery. The Jane excused herself for being naughty by saying, I blowed myself out. You know, Jesus makes it clear that it is through our good works, good attitude, and good words that we could share His light with others. This is the spiritual influence we have on people around us, people in the community. When Christ comes to us and shines His light upon us. But those of us who live under the cover of darkness, those who live in the darkness of shame, guilt, and sin, we can reflect a light of forgiveness, grace, and acceptance. For those who are blinded by despair and hopelessness, we can offer a light, a light of hope and courage. For those who live in the shadow of death and grief, we can embody a light of comfort and a promise of resurrection. Friends, whatever circumstance you may find yourself in today, especially if you feel like you are stuck in a dark, challenging life circumstance. I pray that you welcome the true light. Invite the light to come and journey with you. Certainly it is a daunting thing to journey through darkness, because darkness makes us feel trapped, confused, isolated. Remember there are glimpses and gleamers, hints and signs of God's grace along the journey. In our journey, Christ, the light of the world, is becoming the light onto our path, helping us to look for the light and keep our eyes on the light. If there is someone in your life who is experiencing darkness right now, find a way to reflect the light of Christ to that person after this worship and throughout this week. Remember Jesus was God's plan for loving and enlightening this world. Each of you is God's plan for making this world brighter by the light of Christ. So friends, go offer the warmth and light of Christ and, and let the love of Christ shine through you in the midst of darkness. Amen.